Dr. Barbara Beller produced a uh, wonderful summary of this new law in one sentence, which I will read. She says, we're going to be gifted with a health care plan that we're forced to purchase and find if we don't, which purportedly covers at least 10 million more people without adding a single doctor, but provides for 16,000 new IRS agents, written by a committee whose chairman says he doesn't understand it, passed by a Congress that didn't read it but exempted themselves from it, and signed by a president who smokes, with funding administered by a treasury chief who doesn't pay his taxes, for which we will be taxed for four years before any benefits take effect, by a government that has already bankrupted Social Security and Medicare, all to be overseen by a surgeon general who is obese, and finally, financed by a country that's broke. What to do? Smile and suffer, and assume our leaders know best? Well, that's not an American tradition if we own the government. Or tweak the law? Well, the law is so extensive and has so many bad features, I don't think this is a good option. I think the best option is repeal, replace, and reform the law. Here are some ideas for real health care reform to replace the Affordable Care Act once it's repealed. The key thing that makes health care so expensive and causes so many people to go without insurance nowadays is interference from employers, insurance companies, and the government. If you go back about 50 years, medical office visits were on the average about five dollars. If you corrected that for inflation, it would be $38 today, but that still would not be adequate for most office visits. So what contributes to these massively increasing costs? Well, interference from employers, insurance companies, and government. So the fundamental idea is to decentralize control and restore it to individual patients and their health care providers, which is true democracy and a true free market. Employer interference could be phased out by returning money to the employee's paycheck with proof of insurance. That way, individuals could select their insurance and it would not be job dependent. Patients would no longer be delivered in groups to large insurance plans. There's also uh, many options for state level reform, such as encouraging states to eliminate insurance mandates for certain non essential or non-traditional medical coverage, such as massage or acupuncture, to lower baseline costs. Again, this is not meant to be critical of various alternative treatments, but just one idea for reducing the baseline cost of a health care policy. Other state-level reforms are, very importantly, to replace the notion that insurance is prepayment for routine health and preventive care and substitute it with a major medical model of shared risk for large, unanticipated medical and surgical expenses. This uh, would be similar to a car warranty that has a high deductible and covers mainly major repairs for an automobile rather than a car warranty that covers every nut, bolt, oil change, and new tire. Routine care would not be covered, but would contribute to the deductible, and this would enable massive reduction in the expense of health care premiums, thus putting health care within the reach of many, many more people. A concerto of change would be needed, including all the people involved, patients, doctors, drug companies, hospitals, insurance, lawyers, medical device entities, state health care summits would be a good place to start. States are the best place for sustainable reform anyway to restore federalism to the system rather than centralized federal government control. Ideally, you would have 50 different states with 50, 50 different sets of laws so that if some state has a really bad uh, health insurance environment, people could move or at least purchase their insurance across state lines. Federal reforms that would be helpful would be to allow health insurance as an individual, individual tax deduction and also include deductions for health savings accounts. 
another tremendously effective reform that would virtually overnight abolish the problem of patients without insurance would be to make the cost of charitable care a tax-deductible item to the physician. Physicians currently cannot deduct charitable care against their practice income. Uh, if this deduction were provided to physicians, the Medicaid fee schedule could be used as a reasonable limit on yearly deductible amounts. And of course, the deduction would only be uh, applicable if the physician is unable to collect from the uninsured patient after at least an extended period of time. The Medicaid safety net should be retained for the truly indigent or poor of all ages. However, Medicaid payments could be paid to states in the form of block grants, which would eliminate the drive to enroll people for matching federal monies, decentralize the cost, promote innovation, and help reduce the cost of Medicaid. Medicaid could also serve as a one-year rider for pre-existing conditions or as stopgap insurance for those between jobs. Again, federal reforms which are very effective would be pre-tax funded health savings account, the money from which could be kept by the patient if it's not spent, like an IRA. These uh, accounts already exist, such as HSAs or MSAs. Unfortunately, the Affordable Care Act is very hostile to these entities, and this is another reason that it should be repealed. It would also be helpful if federal law was reformed to allow purchase of health insurance across state lines so that 50 states or insurance companies in 50 states are competing for consumers' business rather than insurance companies just within the consumer's state. Another reform that would be helpful would be to allow patients over 65 to opt out of Medicare in return for a stipend check. This would not replace Medicare, it would just be an option in addition to Medicare. There would probably be a gradual phase out of Medicare as a result because most people would find that private options to Medicare are far more attractive and less expensive. As mentioned, Medicaid should be retained for indigent or poor people of all ages, including those over 65. There's also a significant opportunity for market reform by physicians. Each physician could develop a fee schedule for all patients regardless of insurance. It would eliminate cost shifting. The physician relationship with a patient would be restored. Transparent fee schedules could be available through a state website portal for consumer comparison and promote uh, consumer motivated shopping, which would definitely lower prices direct physician contracts with insurance companies would phase out. The same uh, transparent fee schedule could be, could be applied to hospitals, laboratories, and pharmaceuticals. It's very difficult now to find out the price of laboratory tests or pharmaceuticals, but if a fee schedule was readily available, people could again shop and cost compare and obtain the lowest price, eliminating cost shifting and burdensome administrative requirements with multiple fee schedules. There is nothing like a price-coordinated free market for lowering costs and improving quality.